while Beverly and I are in school. <laughs> skull, yeah. Skull. Skull spelt shoe, yeah. <laughs> and um, there's an awful lot more shops here. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> in um, Baltimore, there was one, one shop. shop. One shop. Uh, lots of pubs. Yeah. Uh, and lots of places to go out at night, uh, but just one shop, which is why we actually did our shopping in Skibbereen and caught the bus. The other reason we did our shopping in Skibbereen is because you, I know they say that in these little towns, the back end and beyond, um, you pay local prices in local shops, which is fair enough, you expect to do that. But I think that one in Baltimore was possibly the dearest shop I've ever shopped in. I mean, you go in there with 20 euros, you'd buy about three items, come out with about come out with about one euro change it was outrageous what they brought I mean things like peppers were like one euro fifty each instead of like one euro fifty for a pack of three like it is everywhere else I mean it was just absolutely crazy and I loved their other technique uh, of not pricing everything well no, no that's not true they do price everything there are shelf edge labels but what's on the shelf above the label has got no relation or to the label. below it not... or, or below it. like you buy butter and the label says washing powder underneath and eggs above <laughs> yeah so you go over to the eggs in the hope that it might say butter and now it'll say something like um, washing powder or something. So I think the idea is just to embarrass you into buying it regardless of cost because there's a big queue at the till. You don't, you don't stop and ask for every item because did. people will take you outside and throw you in the harbour because the, the queue would be immense. Uh, so it was, here, worth, it was worth the bus fare just to go to Skibbereen. But uh, here in uh, Skull um it's a it's got a proper centre it's a proper centre and it's a decent centre rather oh, than yeah. one that's just made for butties and things uh and um for me it's actually got a decent gluten-free aisle so uh, i was very happy yeah. um it's also uh, we've also managed to track down um some gas so the 907 gas bottles, the hardware shop here in Skull stocks them. A little useful piece of info there. Uh, but uh, do contact them because I'm nicking the last one. <laughs> no, you're not. You're paying for the last I'm one. I'm paying for the last one. But, if you can uh, nick it, we're going to have to leave here even quicker than we thought. <laughs> but uh, um, behind uh, Skull is um, what I thought were observatories, but they're not, are they, Ben? Well, I thought they were. They look like observatory domes that you get uh, astronomical telescopes in. So I looked them up and they are uh, Eurocontrol Air um, Approach Radars. So basically, as you're flying in from um, the, the US and points west of here, these are the radars that basically pick you up and guide you to Shannon and onward to Dublin and places like that. Um, there's a little story about these particular ones which I read on the website while I was finding out what they were. And that is that back in the days of the Troubles, the IRA or the INLA or somebody like that had the idea they were listening posts for British intelligence. I mean, come on, it's about as far from Britain as you can get here. This is the back end of Ireland. This is this is the last thing. You go you go that way 2,000 miles, you hit Africa. You go that way 3,000 miles, you hit Canada. Yeah. Um, but they blew them up. <laughs> so. If you had delays back in the 70s or early 80s and your flights into here, it was probably because they were missing off the top of their mountain tops. I'm sure by now they've got big round fences around them. I'm not going up to find out because it looks like it's a long way up. Mm. <laughs> um, at school, um, there's lots and lots of places to anchor. And um, I read somewhere that there was a huge regatta here once and they had 1,000 and 900 boats anchored here just to give you an idea of just how I'm, big I'm a, it is. I'm a little dubious about that because if you empty it out every marina in Ireland you, you'd possibly just about get 1,900 and I'm sure not everybody, uh, uh, nobody anywhere else seems to have tales of oh I remember that day that was the day we emptied the marina and sent them all to the southwest of Ireland. Yeah so I suspect what it is is it was it was the uh, regatta in 1996. <laughs> Rather than 1,996 boats. boats. <laughs> uh, so if you know anything about that, do leave a comment down below. We'd love to know how many boats were here in that mysterious regatta of yesteryear. But <laughs> It's uh, the Sail Cruising Club Cruise in Company. I thought it was the Irish Cruising Club. Irish Cruising Club, that's it. Irish Cruising Club. Yeah, Seal ICC. Cru Seal, Seal Cruising is a bunch of Facebook groups. Yeah, yeah. ICC. <laughs> yeah. Cruising Company is the yeah. right correct phrase rather than the regatta. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh dear. So anyway, we're going to pop into um, 
crow, as Gainer has it. And um, we're going to get the gas. We're going to get the gas. Uh, I'm going to make up for my hoo ha in the shop yesterday where I bought unsalted butter instead of the correct stuff, which has got lots of lovely, yummy sodium chloride in to give it taste. And, um, and she'll also get me some cheese. Will I? Yes, you will. And I'll be getting her some cheese as well. Uh, right, should we get the engine on the back of the dinghy? Absolutely. Right, let's do that. Uh, frustrated Beverly and I are at the moment. We are up to here and beyond with regard to the weather. We decided to move from Baltimore and it was like oh we're escaped from Baltimore because the... Right hello everybody Future Bev here and um, I'm popping into the video at this point uh, from three months in the future because you need a bit of an explanation and possibly a bit of an apology. From this point forward, the videos for a while are going to be a little bit unconnected. The reason for that is the way we film. So I'm just going to give a very, very brief uh, overview of how we film these episodes. We have multiple cameras about the boat. We use these little tiny action cams, they're like GoPro knockoffs as we call them. And we have several of them about the boat. We have two that we permanently mount. Um, one under the spray hood, uh, which faces backward, and so you can see people sitting here, sitting over there, sitting at the helm station. There's an external microphone for all these, so that's not an issue. The other one is up in the arch, and it's the one we call Pengi Cam, because in an earlier episode, Prudence stole it. I'm glad to say that she stopped doing things like that, at least for now, and all is good. But anyway, that is the camera that shows you the forward-facing views of the boat as we're going along. So when we're coming into harbour or something like that, you can see where the boat's going just like we can. Our issue is this. For some reason, the cameras misbehaved. We don't know why. Um, our apologies is because we didn't catch it earlier. We've no idea why the cameras did this. The um, Pengi Cam lost all footage for about six weeks and we don't know where it went. The one over there under the spray hood, the one we call Brownie because it looks like a little Kodak box Brownie camera, um, we have two of those and we, we, we interchange them. They're swappable so when that one is full up we simply take the other one, snap it into place, connect the external microphone and we're, we're good to go again. For some reason some setting changed in that one and it didn't record audio. So we got 14 videos of us standing doing big pieces to camera there's absolutely no audio for it. <laughs> now we've tried to work around that and we've tried to replace the bits where we can but it's going to look a bit odd. There's just no two ways about that. There's going to be some odd sections, there's going to be some big jumps where we go from place A to place B because we did all our explanations to Brownie and nothing got recorded. Now since then we have been checking them much more assiduously. We check the settings more often and hopefully this will not happen. It hasn't happened in five years of filming, it's the first time it happened. Um, the fault is ours because we left the footage on the chips because it's never been a problem. It's a problem now. So with that all in mind we're going to go from Skull to Baltimore in a bit of a peculiar passage. But there you go. And with all that, back to the video. Well we're sorry we're having to do this pseudo piece of uh, camera work. Pseudo? Yeah well I, uh, we lost the sound on a particular piece of um, piece <laughs> to camera that we did so um, but I can roughly remember what I did or said. Can you remember where you were? Oh yeah I can remember where I was. <laughs> well then I can do some days. Mm. But uh, basically uh, we were coming out of um, Skull and um, we were motor sailing
we are now sailing. But um, I was absolutely up to here with the weather. We had had storm, we'd been in Baltimore and we'd had storms coming from the south. Um, <laughs> sorry, not as comfortable as I thought it was. We're doing five and a half knots at the minute. Oh, okay, fair enough. Wind's picked up. Yeah. But um, we'd had storms coming from the south. Um, and these are tropical storms, so far too um, high for us to continue our journey. Tropical storms that have made it out of the tropics. Yes, tropical storms. So what we decided to do is we, we decided to let those pass and then whippy doo -dah, they had passed. So we went into Skull and then we were thinking of departing from Skull only to notice that there was a huge number of storms coming from the north. And this is, and again, it would just be no way so what we were doing was we were looking for where we could go because the way that the winds were going to go, like Skull is absolutely perfectly protected from the north, but it was going to do a complete 180 degrees and um, Skull, so the wind would be coming from the south for sort of like 16 hours. Skull's not good with a southerly wind. And sa Skull is not good with a southerly wind, so we were looking as to where we can go. So there was quite a few places that we could think about. One of them was uh, Crockhaven. So we contacted people on Facebook and things like that. You know, is this going to be a great place? Now, because it was doing this 180, that meant that one of the um, wind directions was going to be coming from the west. Now, there is a whopping great big piece of land on the west, but in the pilotage, it just said, do not anchor here in the west. So we suspect it must get catabatic, so we don't actually know. We don't know, but we contacted a couple of people and they said west is untenable. West is not best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's out. So the next place we thought about going was uh, Clearhaven? Clear Island. Clear, Clear Island. North Harbour and Clear Island. Don't but who you... but no, no. Yeah, but nobody runs the place apparently. It's a turn up and hope for the best and it's sort of like a community run thing and you go in and then people come in and raft to you. So getting in's easy, but getting out's a bit of an issue. So that left us with a good old, well-proven, well-time-tested option. Which is go back to, to Baltimore. Baltimore. So it was like go back to Baltimore and I just really annoyed because our escape from Baltimore was a complete and utter Failure! <laughs> oh dear. But anyway, we're not escaping from Baltimore at the minute. No, we're not. We're, well, we are in a way. We've escaped from Baltimore. It's the, other, it's the other end of the island, quite literally. Yeah, but yeah. I've just had to do that little piece because we lost okay. the sound. Okay.